As a person who's going into the final year of a physics degree at the University of Oxford, I've done quite a lot of studying in my time, and I believe that if you want to study your most effective, you should follow five simple rules. Rule number one, realise that learning is individual. There's this stereotype of studying taking place in complete silence in a library, and that somehow if you're not studying like that, then you're doing it wrong. But the thing to realise is that there is no such thing as the wrong way to study. If you work in a particular way and find that it works for you, then you're doing it right. Education comes from the Latin educare, meaning to draw forth. And that's exactly what studying is all about. It's not about stuffing your head full of facts. It is about making the most of your potential. And in order to do that, you have to tailor your studying. I personally work at my best in a library, in silence, with earplugs in, but then sometimes I don't. Sometimes I work better in an environment like a coffee shop or my college common room where there's the sound of other people buzzing around you. If you don't know what works best for you, then experiment. Try working in different environments. Try working with music, without music, with friends, on your own. Once you find a way that works for you, stick with it. Think about where you work at your best, so bedroom, coffee shop, library, wherever but also when you work at your best. Again, personally, I prefer to work on new material and theory in the morning and then practice in the afternoon, but that varies from subject to subject. Again, experiment and see what works best for you. Rule number two, managing your time. This is absolutely crucial. Managing your time is all about making the job of studying as easy as possible for you. So if you don't do it, you're only making life harder for yourself than you need to. When I say managing your time, I mean it on two different timescales, both on a daily basis, but also on a longer timescale of terms and months. On a daily basis, plan what you're going to do each day. Every evening, I'll write a to-do list of what I want to accomplish tomorrow. So that will be things like do this problem sheet, finish this section of notes, whatever. And in doing that, I'm trying to timetable about eight hours worth of work. And that's a good amount to aim for every day in the long run. In the couple of weeks leading up to exams, you're probably going to want to allow for a couple more hours per day. Planning your time so you revisit material is absolutely crucial. What I do is keep a diary of work, and then at the end of each day, write down what it was that I've done that day. Then turn ahead one week and write down a reminder to review what I'd just done, and then the same thing for one month's time. By writing in your day's work, you keep track of what you've done and it allows you to look ahead to tomorrow and see what you need to review and you can incorporate that in your to-do list for the next day. If you're consistent with it, it becomes a very powerful tool. Another tool that people find really useful is using a whiteboard and I used this a lot in the past to keep track of deadlines. So whenever I'll set a problem sheet, an essay or an assignment or whatever, I would write in on the whiteboard when I was given it what I had to do and when it was due in. Then put that in a visible place and make sure that you check it every day so you can never forget what it is you have to do. You can also use it to plan ahead the next day's work or do rough working for problem sheets on it. In the longer term, don't start working too late. You can always start revising material before you've finished everything in class. Leaving everything to the last minute only adds extra stress and it means you're never gonna be able to perform at your best in exams. Sit down with a calendar or diary and work out how many weeks you've got until your exams. Then write a list of all the material that you need to cover by then. Then decide how you want to structure your time. Do you want to do all of a particular subject in one go, one subject at a time, or would you prefer to mix it up doing different subjects in one day or in one week? Personally, I prefer the latter. Then you need to draw up a rough timetable, splitting up the time that's available to you between the material that you need to cover. Make sure that you have a rough idea of when you want to get particular modules done so you can gauge your progress and know if you're falling behind schedule. Also, when do you want to practice? Personally, I find it most beneficial to do the theory behind something first, then a day or so later, do some practice. Then, in the week or couple of weeks before the exams, get my hands on as many past papers as possible and drill exam technique. Now, some people prefer to revise purely from past papers, though from personal experience, I wouldn't recommend that. I think it's better to focus on the material, making sure you understand it first, then practicing lots. Rule number three, manage your notes. As I said before, learning is as individual as people are, and so notes that two people make, any two people make, will never be the same. But I believe that there are some basic rules you should try and stick to when making your notes. The first of those is to try and keep your notes consistent. 
this year I probably went a bit OTT on this and I wrote all of my notes on exactly the same type of paper with exactly the same type of pen with the same um, cover scheme and subheading structure throughout. And yeah, that's probably a bit over the top, but keeping your notes consistent I find helps me synthesise information that bit better. Plus it looks professional. Another one of these rules is to realise that certain subjects lend themselves to certain types of making notes. So for physics, for example, which involves lots of richly detailed concepts and absolutely loads of mathematical sections, I personally found it best to produce notes which read like a textbook. So I even had a page numbering system and a contents page so I could use it as a reference. And those notes, those final notes, represent the culmination of notes from textbooks, notes from lectures and notes from tutorials. However, for something like anthropology or geography, which involves lots of concepts with absolutely loads of case studies and references, it might be more useful to produce something like an A3 mind map, which links information spatially to a concept. Also, remember that there are different types of notes. Those two examples I've already given, textbook notes and mind maps, are examples of visual learning, the idea being that you look at the information on the page and you remember it. But just as validly, you could produce notes which appeal to other styles of learning. So, learning by hearing, auditory learning, and learning by doing, or kinesthetic learning. Examples of these might be uh, making recordings or videos of yourself explaining concepts and then playing them back as a revision, or the classroom classic is to imagine yourself as an electron and then think about how changing the voltage or resistance of a circuit might change the way that you move. And remember that you can always mix up different styles of notes. You can always do some visual notes and some kinesthetic notes, if that will help you. Broadly speaking though, try and keep your notes, whatever they may be, as consistent as you can, and also as um, clean and uncluttered as you can. My notes have loads of white space on the page and they're written as clearly as I can manage. Any clutter on the page is only making your brain work harder than it absolutely has to, and give it a break. Rule number four. Take good care of yourself. Yes, I am going to make this point, and yes, I know it is really boring, but it is so important. You're never going to be able to perform at your best if you are not at your best. So yeah, do all those things that your parents and teachers have been telling you to do for years. Try and get a good amount of sleep each night. If you, if you can, aim for about eight hours. If you don't, then your brain's only going to be tired and you won't be able to take in new information or remember old information. Try to exercise two or three times a week. Go swimming, go running, play some football, go to the gym, whatever. As well as making you fitter, exercise releases endorphins, which are the body's feel-good chemicals, and so it will make you happier and better able to study. And also, it gives you something other than just working to look forward to, especially if you take your exercise with a friend, like going running with a friend is a great idea. Probably the most important thing though is to consistently eat a good diet. And when I say that, I don't just mean eat salad, I mean eat a balanced diet with plenty of protein, fish if you can, enough calories and not too many sugary things. There's a tendency amongst people to fuel late night study sessions, sometimes all study sessions, with sugary foods to give you a buzz and a sugar high. And yeah, you're going to get a sugar high for a bit, but the low which comes after that is just going to make you want to give up studying for the night. Also, a UCLA study recently showed that a diet high in sugar significantly hampers the brain's ability to synthesise new information and recall old information. And this isn't to say that you shouldn't eat any sugary foods, just try and cut down where you can. It's the small changes that can make a big difference, like drinking diet soft drinks instead of regular ones, or instead of having chocolate as a snack, having nuts. Also, drink plenty of water. It's a really common problem to get dehydrated while studying, so keep a bottle of water close to hand and keep drinking throughout the day. Rule number five, work really hard. I've saved this point to last because if I'd mentioned it any earlier it would have put people off, but also because it is the most important point to make. None of what I've said before is gonna count for anything if you're not willing to put the hard work in. The only way that anyone's ever done anything, ever, is by putting in lots and lots of hard work. The whole genius being 1% inspiration, 99% perspiration quote is true. Even Einstein, one of the most intelligent scientists that ever lived, took 10 years to form his theory of general relativity. And the theory is a triumph, it's, it's one of the most incredible accomplishments that humankind has ever managed. But if he hadn't sat down and thought about it for 10 years, 
put in the hours of doing really, really hard maths, we wouldn't have a theory of relativity. If you want to succeed, the only way to do it is to sit down and get on with it, to, to put in the hours of work, to put in the blood, sweat and tears. But hard work in itself does not guarantee success. Ultimately, it's not about what you put into your studying that counts, it's about what you get out of your studying that counts. And that's exactly where all the stuff I talked about previously comes in. If you're willing to put in those hours of effort, the, the dozens of hours of sitting down and doing hard work, then you need to make sure that what you put in counts. If you're going to work hard, make sure that your learning is tailored to you. Manage your time and manage your notes and take good care of yourself. And if you do all those things, then the work that you put in is going to be worth so much more. Best of luck.